धर्म स्वरूपिणी अवतार वरिष्ठाय राम कृष्णाय ते नम मोस्ट ऑफ यूर स्वामी चिदानंद जी एंड अदर स्वामीज एंड डियर डिवोटीज फ्रेंड्स इज अ वंडरफुल ऑकेशन फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस टू लिसन टू द हेड ऑफ द स्पिरिचुअल एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव हेड ऑफ द रामाकृष्ण मॉडर्न मिशन श्रीमद स्वामी सुहितानंद जी अबाउट द मिशन वर्क ऑल ओवर he joined the ramakrishna order in 1958 and he served as the principal of the higher secondary schools at rahoda and also narendrapur centers most of you you know that very famous schools he served as a deoghar vidyapit is also another very famous school uh, as its secretary and he was appointed as a trustee of the ramakrishna mart and the member of the governing body of the ramakrishna mission in 1995 all over the world we have uh, the shami will say correctly i think it is almost 180 centers and also so many sub centers and then devotees ashramas devotees they maintain the ashramas is a huge organization and this is run by a group of people they are the trustees and the bo- uh, governing body so they appoint us we have come and we are in different places working we are the members of the ramakrishna mission they appoint us and look after the work he served as the assistant secretary is the assistant general secretary of the ramakrishna mart and the ramakrishna mission from may 1997 to 2012 now 2013 he became the most general the general secretary of the ramakrishna mart and the hmm? 2012 itself 2000 uh, may june from june itself i can remember when he became the general secretary all the swamis came they were uh, congratulating him i also uh, one of them and i told swami ji you have to give leaders in such a way so that we can spread all over as swami vivekananda envisaged and it is truly he has done excellent in under his guidance the ramakrishna mission everywhere you know the great celebration 150th birth anniversary of swami vivekananda and you can see in my office i have kept two commemorative volume that has been published from the belur mart this is a huge heavy volume Uh, and it is about the work that the mission has done and celebration so many and now he is going traveling almost everywhere inspiring and almost in all corners of the world and he has the wonderful visions and we will hear from him how the ramakrishna mission is working all over the world and as the head of the this movement how he feels how what is his experience may i request simhat swami suitananda ji maharaj to come and speak a few words about it and he has agreed to answer your questions if you have the last 10 minutes Shridharanji Maharaj, I offer my bhakti bhuna pranams at His holy feet. Revered 
Ishatmanand ji, Varadanand ji, Shivakarananda ji and other monks present here. And uh, they consider that you are the devotees or at best the admirers of this movement. The topic is Ramakrishna mission in foreign centers and my experience. A Ramakrishna mission, we all know that it is a culture, it is a civilization. It has come down from Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother, Swamiji and the direct disciples. Whatever theme, whatever concept they practice, they discover and what they fail that will be a necessity for the whole world. And it was the sacred responsibility on Swami Vivekananda to carry that message to the world because Sri Ramakrishna himself has entrusted on him that onerous responsibility. Holy Mother endorsed that responsibility. Being on Vivekananda, he wanted to spread his message. And that message for that which country he selected. It was we may say that it is some sort of an accidental coincidence or we do not know whether it is calculated providential action, whatever may be the thing. But the fact is that this America was considered to be that spot, selected spot, chosen spot. Why he did select, God selected America? for this purpose. England was undoubtedly very much at the epitome of world power at that time, London. Swamiji himself mentioned that if a one just, if I give a blow in England, it will have ten times repercussion or result effect in India. So that was, but why did he select America? America, we all know that it is having some very rich culture and heritage. I would like to share with you, just a, I feel tempted to share with you one quotation from Gargi, why Swamiji had so much feeling for America. A little lengthy, but please bear with as I see it, his gigantic mission in America was to alter at its deepest source the whole thought cut of the Western people. This was the person, purpose. Why did he select America? The whole deepest source, the whole thought current of the Western people and this without in any way disturbing their inherent greatness their long evolving capacity for rational thought, their powers of scientific analysis, their innate ability to invent and to explore, to brave any storm and hurdle any obstacle, their passion for freedom, their capacity for compassion, their yearning for truth. Swamiji knew that there was only one way to save these priceless, long developing human qualities from erosion, and that was to root them in the unshakable adamantine truth of Advaita Vedanta. That's the reason he came here. He could have started his action or activities in England also. But God had chosen America and his appreciation 
also in about America, we all know. Swamiji in one place has mentioned that this American, especially about the ladies, they can do wonders. When Swamiji could find that MacLeod, Olibull, they are staying in Belurmot, in a small hut, in a very just pitiable condition of that building. In that house, how they are very joyfully accommodating and staying peacefully. Then Swamiji passed this comment, this American women, they can do wonders. So they were just how much luxury they were, but now how they have adjusted with this thing. That zeal, that spirit, that sense of freedom, that, that thing was very much uh, attracting some captivating influence on Swamiji. And Swamiji felt, I must do something for them. We all know that when Swamiji came, at that time he, the idea was to collect money for India. And he was trying, but the more he was coming closer to the people of that society, of that community, the more he was finding the final aspects, the better aspects of that society. And he was feeling that when this society is looking after me so much, then I also have some moral responsibility to look after them. So why are they lacking? They are lacking in this Vedantic concept. They have already so said. But if they do not take up this thing, in that case, that will go down, that will degrade. And even that beautiful power also may be lost. So I have that moral responsibility, I shall have to do, and he starts doing that thing. And it's what he did and how, what impact it made that we all know. Now, afterwards, once Nivedita, in one of her letters, she mentioned that letter she wrote to Olibul, not MacLeod, MacLeod. In that letter, she mentioned that we, the persons, those who are moving with Swamiji, we are conscious and we know what sort of personality Swami Vivekananda is. But soon, when we people will move out from the world stage, gradually Vivekananda will be forgotten. People will forget him. But again, after 150 years, again Vivekananda will come back. And that time, it will have its impact not only in America, but in other countries also. And that thing is coming up. Recently, I had some opportunity to visit some of the places. <coughs> I would like to share my experiences of those centers. First, I would like to tell you that the more being the Secretary General of Ramakrishna Mission, I am to come in touch with various sections of our devotees, admirers, critics, and all sections of society, those who are a bit interested or disinterested about this Ramakrishna Mission. And I am to come in touch with them. One thing I has become common thing, common um, factor has been, that means everybody wants that the devotees, the monks, everyone should become good persons. This is a high expectation of the people. I remember one funny incident, one of my junior swans, one day, he was telling, Mara, I am looking after this guardian, garden so much and for so many months I am doing. He was giving that responsibility, but not a single word of appreciation I find from any corner. <laughs> then I said, you will understand it the moment you will fall short in your responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing, that's our standard. Our standard is this, it is not that you, the devotees, you always expect that the monastery members, they should be of very high caliber, very high standard. There should not be an iota of criticism about the monastery members of this order. You cannot tolerate. 
you cannot tolerate it, it strikes you, it pins it. You feel as if some shock is there. So that sort of expectation you are having about us and that enriches us, that gives us protection. We also feel that how much they have respect for us. So we shall also have to come up to that standard. So this thing I have observed in all the centers, in all the centers. Similarly, almost in every center, I could find that they are sincerely a very high caliber of people. Not that it is a big multitude of people, that 10,000 people, 5,000 people, nothing of that sort. So 50 to 60 selected in the language of Arnold Tanvi, a creative minorities. They are just a minority group, 40 to 50 maximum, but they are the creative minorities. How they create, that I cannot say, but they create. What they create, that also you cannot say, but they create something. That thing, that this creative minority is, everywhere I find that they are of this. It is not that they are very much exalted spirituality. It is not that they have developed some occult power. It is not that they are too much doing some big, big social service. Nothing of that sort. Very simple, honest life they are leading, but it is having impact on the society. Because how? Because whenever they go somewhere, immediately they command respect. They command respect. People will have, oh, this appeal has come from that thing, and so and so has come. And they cannot simply throw away or reject you. They cannot reject. They may give, may not respond, but they cannot reject you. So this is the strength, this is called this creative minority group, the devotees and admirers of Ramakrishna mission. Every center, I find that there are, I, one day I was telling that had I not joined this Ramakrishna Sangha, probably I would have some different impression about the whole world. After joining here, because the moment we switch on the TV, the moment we run over the pages of the newspaper, we find all is negative, 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 all is negative information. I see nothing positive, nothing good is going to happen in this world. But the moment we come to our ashram, we find here is a positive force. The positive regimens are present here. It is not only in America, but in every corner. I go, I find the same type of people, the same devotion, not, they are not expecting anything for them. Probably they are working for one week or this day in, day out they are working and so probably they are living the ashrama even without getting a morsel of just prasad even. But that is their charm, that is their satisfaction. They like to be just scolded. They like to be shared with this asama and they find pleasure in it. Is it not something unique feature? This is the thing, these devotees of Sri Ramakrishna, they are carrying this type of psychological, philosophical and mental stature. They are not ordinary pygmies. They are not ordinary pygmies. They cannot be because we are all thinking Sri Ramakrishna. And mo so many of us have our Ishtra mantras. And daily we are taking their name. How can we become ordinary people? Swamiji wanted that each one of you will have to be unique. Some sort of originality you will have to establish. And that originality we find in every devotee of Sri Ramakrishna, every admirer, is not necessarily that they are to be devotees. Because we have seen so many persons who are not at all devotees, but they are service. like Sri Ramakrishna. They like Sri Ramakrishna. Here, I would like to share some of my reminiscences, some of my just reminiscences about some centers. First, we would like to be mention about our South Africa. In South Africa, Darwin, we have one center, and that center 
well, is our affiliated center, and that center has got four or five sub centers also. These sub centers, if you visit these sub centers, you feel surprised when they were showing us around. It is not that they could just in one stroke, they were like Aladdin's mm, candle, they could mm, do it anything. I was surprised that every center, five, six centers, every center is having the hall which can accommodate nearly 300 to 500 people. And each hall is air conditioned, air conditioned hall, because hot and cold is there, then. And each ashram is maintained by these householders, the devotees they maintain. Because monastery member is only one center at Durban, and it has got this five, six, uh, four, five brand centers. These brand centers are maintained by the devotees themselves. And these devotees, when they come to the ashram, they come with some uniform. Uniform. That means equal dress. Say, very plain, simple dress they will put on and come. And their children also they come in the same fashion. Same fashion. One interesting thing I was surprised to find that the ladies, women folk, while they were doing pranams, they were not touching my feet. Say so one uh, feet at uh, one foot or say two feet distant from there, they are doing my pranam. I feel a little surprised. I said, oh, is it uh, some instruction? Oh, no, this has been the practice here. One Swami who got initiation from Birajananda Maharaj, he was South African, he got read Sri Ramakrishna and felt inspired to become a monk. He came to India and wanted to be a monk of the Ramakrishna order. But at that time, it was difficult because he was of different countries, so how to accommodate him, because in those days the rules, the disciplines, all the things were very difficult and tough, and Belumot also did not have so much of power in those days. So they decided that let him have his sannyasa from outside and let him go back and work on behalf of Ramakrishna mission. But not it will be a affiliated center, but it will be a private center, something like that. And that he started and did it. He introduced all these things. That means copying Ramakrishna mission, he introduced, he felt that the sadhus should be respected and whenever the devotees, they will greet each other with the name Namo Narayana. This, in this name, they will greet each other. Even the husband in the ashram will greet the wife in the name of Namo Narayana. So that sort of culture uh, he generated there. They will have to come in simple dress, white and simple dress is there. Ladies also same thing, gents also same thing, and the children also same thing. And the, in all the centers you go, yeah, today is Wednesday, this Wednesday, what sort of this cloth will be in the shrine, you can see. Five centers will follow the same thing. This uh, Guru Maharaj will put on this dress, Holy Mother this, Swamiji this, in that way. And the flowers also more or less selected, that this type of flower will be given, and this type of bhajan also is sung. Mm. So everything, very meticulously, everything is done. And they were running, how they are running, that is also interesting. The devotees, they have taken the whole responsibility. They collect, they lead their life, naturally they can have impact on the society. So whatever they say, the society also accept. Even the government people uh, just support them. Government people also support them. So in that way, this has become some very, very beautiful, positive uh, uh, movement in South Africa. Now, next man, uh, his Sharda Prabhananda, who was in charge, he approached Belmont 
and requested us that to take, take over that ashram. And we took it over. Our some of some senior monks visited, and they were also impressed to see all the things. One interesting thing I forgot to mention. He, our Shubhakarananda, also was with me, and mentioned that there he insisted that every devotee should have a shrine at home. Every devotee should have a shrine at home. It may be a very small thing, but one corner reserved for, and you will, they will have to do havan. Havan, say it may be once in a month, once in a month, but in a very humble way. It may take say 10 minutes or 5 minutes, but they will have to do. Even nowadays, the devotees, they are following the same thing. To see the performance of these volunteers of the ashrama, and they naturally they do all the activities. They will come, where they, each one is doing somebody, a big director of some in farm, somebody very good doctor, topmost doctor, somebody charter accountant, they will come in the ashrama by their car and they will do all sorts of activities household cleaning, this, that, everything. They are fixed. Mondays so and so, Tuesdays so and so, Wednesdays so and so, they will come, do and take a cup, themselves will prepare a cup of tea and biscuit and afterwards washing, they will move out. They will not talk to the Swami or not the Swami will uh, come and talk to them. It is their responsibility, they do it and leave the ashram. This is a one character I saw very much charm. So, during the last one uh, Swamiji's celebration, I, we prepared there should be an orientation of the volunteers. And for that, we left, uh, kept a, one chapter, one agenda that is uh, South African volunteers. Their role, and someone was invited to give a talk and some discussion also was on it. This is one interesting thing I would like I have shared with you. Now, I would like to share about Paris. There, that center also it is a, some, I would say it is a beautiful center, beautiful center in this sense. When I went there, that was of course certainly because the Secretary General is coming, naturally there was some celebration. But one thing is there, this time also on our way back, we are coming here, we halted there. Morning time, some devotees they come. They, they do not take part in so many activities, but they have some fixed role. Probably they stay in some neighborhood, come and they attain the shrine. In the shrine, so one, nearly one hour, total duration, one hour, some um, performances there, some chanting, Gita, some Sotra, and afterwards some puja and meditation, and afterwards they will take their breakfast and go out. Say 10 to 15 devotees regularly they come. They come, they do this thing. And the other devotees, they come and they share the other activities of the ashrama. Say on Saturday, Sunday, they come and do that thing. That's also, and one lady was so charmed that she has memorized the Gita. Old lady, old lady, she has memorized the Gita and she will. Just night time after food, she will sit and chant one chapter daily without going through the book. And she will not face the audience, she will face the Gita and the picture of Guru Maharaj and chant this sloka and others would repeat. So it was something interesting, some, some sort of inspiration has come in her. And afterward, they translate it into Spanish, French language. So this is another uh, interesting I could find there. And they are trying to start some 
center in Italy also. And not only, I was find, surprised to find that some Sanskrit seminary is being organized there. The Leonid 20 to 2030 Pundits, they come, they are university professors or some scientists or even some come, come from London, some come from Italy, they come there and to attend every month or by monthly something, they organize this seminar on Sanskrit and there are some courses are there, one of the teachers they come and they do it. The why I said, uh, do you get students? Yes, generally the educated persons, those who are doing some sort of research work, they want to know Sanskrit because they want to read the source books in the original. So they were, whether there has been the transition, some twisting has been done or not, so they want to know Sanskrit. This is a new culture I could find in Paris. In Germany, in Paris, this is also a, another interesting point I should mention that these devotees, admirers, all the, they are not Indians, nor that they were the second generation uh, French people, not that their root was not India, they are all from France. They are from the French people, they come and share everything. In Germany also, they, it is having three centers. One is Berlin, another Bindweis, and another probably Frankfurt. Three units are there. The Bindweis, that is a far off place. It is a, some sort of retreat center. Mm, uh, it can accommodate nearly 30 to 35 persons. So the devotees during retreat time. The, as you are having Ganges town, seems almost like that. That is also nearly 40, 50 miles far. But the devotees, they enjoy it, they go there occasionally, yearly, three, four times, they do that thing. One, they wanted to show me, that was not the retreat period, they wanted to just show their accommodation, where do, what they do, all these things. Because we had to cover so much distance, so we carried with us some food material, we took our lunch there and we came out. While we are coming out, the head mantra or the head, he did not do any locking or anything of the thing. Everything, lights are on, doors and windows are open, everything, we simply, he called us, Maharaj, let us now depart. Well, what about these things, are, you are living in this position. No, no, no. Our, our neighbors, they have observed that I have come, they will take care of it. They will do everything. Well, yes, the one key is always with them and they take care of the whole ashram. This is, that means they will clean, they will put up the light, they will put and close the doors and windows and everything they do. I said, uh, how this sort of, uh, you have developed a relation, they are Catholics. No, they are saying, since you are coming, our family is moving very nicely. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we are so becoming, they have become some friends in that way. Some relationship and there, this, they are all Germans. One is the treasurer, another is a kitchen in charge, another shrine in charge, another is looking after collection all sorts of activities they themselves are doing. They themselves. Mohanta is just like as their baby. So Mohanta is to be taken care of. So they look after everything and as if he has got nothing to do. They only see that the Mohanta remains undisturbed. So that's the thing how our devotees can come forward and do service. And I, by the way, I like to mention about another center, that is about New Auckland Center, New Zealand, Auckland. It is not our own center, that's a private center, no monastery member is there. But the devotees run it, they invited us, he and myself, we went. And 
I say, I ask them, how do you run it, the center? See, we have some fixed dates and allotted responsibilities, Monday, so and so, Tuesday, so. This family, it is not person, but family. This family, this family, this family, this family. In that way, it was allotted. And accidentally, that was probably Tuesday or something like that, I, I heard it. I, and of course, and as scheduled um, time we went, there was some satsang also, uh, we attended it. On that day, accidentally afternoon, I could finish my mm, just scheduled wo work a little earlier. Two hours I was at my disposal. So it was almost evening. I said, the, who was driving me, the devotee, will you please take me to that ashram premise? He said, Maharaj, now it will be closed. Nobody is there. So what will you see? No, I like to see the place. Let, let us go and see. So I, we had little delayed and ultimately we went there. And that was the time of the Arthrikam time. And on that particular day, one family was allotted. I wanted to check and see whether what they said, whether, whether it is fact or not. That was the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we, we went there. And that day, at that time, already Khandana has been started. The family, husband, wife, their son, daughter, all have come. And they were all sitting and nobody else is there. Only that family, they were doing this khandana, omring, sarva mangala, and, and, and another murta maheshara. These four things they did. Then they read a bit of gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, then meditated and offered some, this, some sweets, some toffee or something like that, one candlestick and one there and incense stick. And they were meditating. And we are sitting and silently observing everything without disturbing them. When they finished, they could see and they are surprised to see us. Maharaj, why did not tell? You know, we are enjoying the whole thing. So this is one fantastic thing about this Auckland Center, which we just have seen. And that these devotees, they themselves come and take care of everything. We need not do anything. Then now about <coughs> our UK center. It is a very prestigious center. The center, it is a little far off place. It is a far off place. It is not in the heart of the city. That means not London. So born in nearly 40, 45 miles, minutes it takes to cover it. So, the devotees go there, but uh, I was feeling that it should have more uh, reaching out programs. That means how to come in touch with the people, as we have seen in this South Africa, or in this Auckland, or in Germany, as they have mixed with the local people, they have come and touched the heart of the people, probably in UK center, that is still lacking. We shall have to think about it. But it has got the resources. Beautiful land, beautiful building, and the site is fantastic. All the facilities are there, and the ashram maintains in spiritual culture. Ashram maintains spiritual cultures. The Mahanto and the others, they get up at nearly three to four, and they go to the shrine, meditate and do their job of or spiritual practices for one hour, something. Afterwards, they go out and do in this way. But, and some publications are there, and they look after the devotees, of course. Especially being in London, uh, naturally people from different corners, and especially those who are interested in the Ramakrishna movement, for the moment they come to know that there is a center, they like to visit it, and they visit, and they get some nourishment to see the ashramas. 
but it is lacking to have more contact, less contact with the common people. Holland, mm, it is a very small center, you can say it's just small flat, it's nothing like that. But the Swami is very much struggling, struggling and one thing I was surprised to find his routine. So meticulously he is following his routine, meditation, whenever he gets time he sits in the shrine and meditates and that has created some atmosphere. The moment you go to the shrine you feel that it is some sort of spiritual energy. He cannot communicate with so much nor he can deliver talks but he can generate something. He can generate and that he is doing. And now the next man who has gone there, he handed over the charge to now some Sunid Malanandan, Sunid Malanandan, uh, we call him Ravinder. He, he is a little more dynamic, he is now reaping the harvest. Already he has got four, five admirers, they are visiting the ashrama and they are trying to help him and he has renovated some old structures, old things and new some publication also he is paying attention. So, it is also we would expect that this center also will come up in no time. And specially the center has our very, very sacred association, Atula Ananda Maharaj. He belonged to this Holland, so he came in touch with Swamiji, Avedan Swami, Hari Maharaj and he got, had his initiation from Holy Mother. Well, he had his, oh my time is over, <laughs> sorry, um, while he had his initiation, at that time, you know, he was taken to Holy Mother. Holy Mother generally is to give initiation one to one. So there was nobody else. He will, Holy Mother was there, he was there and the door was closed and afterwards, after initiation, he came out. Then somebody asked him, you do not know Bengali, Holy Mother does not know English, how could you communicate? Then this Atulanan Swami, he said, when a baby is born, in which language the baby communicates with the mother? <laughs> I also communicated in the same language. <laughs> now, uh, this, um, my, as my time is coming up, so uh, questions. questions, do you have any? Anyhow, the uh, gist is this, our every center, I find this type of devotees, this type of devotees. Say uh, they are not ordinary persons, they are chosen persons, selected persons. Actually, uh, the society is so much hungry, you can well understand that how much is expected from the devotees of Sri Ramakrishna, not only from the monks, our devotees also have equal role, equal role. I like to finish with one incident. You all know that Atmanam when it was put under the soil of Belur Mot, at that time Swamiji put Atmanam, the uh, sacred relics of Sri Ramakrishna on his shoulder because Sri Ramakrishna said, wherever you will put me, I shall stay there. So Swamiji carried the relics when the land of Belur Mot was purchased relics and did worship there. Whole days worship and offerings everything over. Now the relics is to be brought back to Nilam Babu's monastery where they were staying. At that time Swamiji we do not know why he put that responsibility to this man. The Sharat Chandra Chakravarti was there. The Advaja Rajama was there, Baburam Maharaj was there, Premananda, so many monastery brothers were there. But instead of, of selecting his own monastery brothers, he selected Sarat Chandra Chakravarti. And Sarat Chandra Chakravarti, 
he had to carry the relics on his shoulder and back to the monastery. So, Swamiji indirectly, he has put on the shoulders of both the monasteries and the householders the sacred responsibility of carrying the relics of Sri Ramakrishna. So, the, his teachings, preachings are going on in this way. Thank you. So, if you have any questions, in ten minutes. Ten. Difficult proposal, I will say. <laughs> See, huh. difficult. Why I say some some restrictions are to be there. Say, suppose I being a monk, I have got some freedom in the shrine. If you say why I have not, it is not that. But suppose somebody says I shall do Durga Puja, but we will say no. You will have to be a Brahmin. Then only you can do Durga Puja. You should know the rites and rituals. Then only you are permitted to do, do the Durga Puja. So simply, if you say I have the yearning, you can do it in your own room. But whenever it comes to the question of public place of worship, in that case, some rounds and disciplines are to be maintained. Otherwise, the sanctity will be lost. If you read Swamiji's Raja Yoga, there you will find who creates the temples? The devotees, they create the temples. Otherwise, what is temple? It is simply a building and photo and nothing else. By our devotion, that thought vibration, gradually uh, this temple is created. So, that is the reason for to maintain the sanctity of the places. We generally mm, just make the, all these types of restrictions. Otherwise, suppose if I give you, so probably you are a genuine person, if I give permission to you, then she also will come and say, why not me, when you have given me. So, we make a flat, some restriction that no, only the devotees, even we also uh, occasionally go. Uh, when you have raised this thing, I would like to one quotation from a reference. MacLeod, you have heard, uh, sorry, not Mac, Olibud, you have heard of her name how much she did, how much she worked for this Ramakrishna movement. This land of Belumot was purchased by her donation. And so many things have been done. Holy Mother was maintained by MacLeod. And so, you know, whenever Belumot was in need of any financial support, MacLeod is in, in, in Olibul is to do. Now, one day, Sharad Maharaj, Sardan Shami, just they put the relics on the head of Olibur. And that night, Swamiji, Guru Maharaj appeared before Swamiji and cautioned him, please see that I should not be touched by X, Y, Z. Just to see the standard, Sarat Maharaj, stature of Sarat Maharaj, he is just putting this relics on a person like Olivewood, even in that case, if that so much of restriction is required, should we not maintain some amount of uh, just, even we also, we go so, so almost daily, if I stay in Belmont, daily I go into the Gaurama Mandir of Guru Maharaj, but daily I do not touch, I do not touch, I do not know 
whether my mind is on right or wrong, whether I am pure or not, something like that. We have the hesitation. It is a, some sort of live wire. Live wire. It appears to be some, some material thing, but it, inside the current is there. If you touch it, that's the reason all sorts of restrictions are there. It is not just to ignore it. <laughs> Why? Yes, Sasfi. In Sasfi, that uh, charge, Swamiji, he himself did not enter. Uh, there was the charge. So, Swamiji, because he was not Christian, probably, I do not know, it may be that, uh, that he himself did not go. He simply sent some flowers to be offered at the feet of Mary. So, it is not that it is a question of demand, it is a question of just raising up ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Would you like to try some of your ancestors to use something? Uh, uh, not now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> God, God willing, other time. I have a question that Swami Vivekananda Maharaj when he, the second time he came to the United States in 1897 and he left and established Ramakrishna Mission in Almaty. His mission was Atma Moksha to invoke the fire of As if we go through your life, we can s understand the same thing. Are you not leading a good life? <laughs> <laughs> so, Atmana Mokshatam, and is your life is doing any just difficult situation to others? You try to keep everybody as peaceful. Isn't so? Do you like to disturb others? You do not like. Why? Why? That means you have got the concern for the society. As you are practicing in your personal life, X, Y, Z, they are also doing, we are also trying to do. In this way, it is a thing, it is a concept. It is not that it is some tangible thing. A concept is being translated through our life and teachings and our actions. That's the reason that in the initial I said, our devotees, they are of creative minority. Their actions is not that they are constructing big structures. There's nothing up to that. They are having an impact on the brain, on the mind of the society. Thank you, thank you. I had so many points in my store. <laughs> but, <coughs> this is, wherever I am visiting, everywhere I am asking them that we have some sacred responsibility about the youth of the country. We shall have to take up some reaching out programs. It is not that the youths or the old persons, they should come to us. We shall have to go and touch them. We shall have to go to, try to go to schools, colleges, clubs, associations, something like that. Because they belong to the country. They are the asset of the nation. They are the, the son, brother, girls, daughter, mother of anybody, somebody. 
So we shall have to look after their well-being. If we find that they are not going on the right track, it is our responsibility to see how much we can help them. It is very good proposal. I would suggest that Maharaj will certainly consult with you and will try to find out some means how to touch them, how we can touch them. It is, if you could simply call them and give them some sermon, just thousand uh, on the mount or some um, inspired talks, it would not appeal to them. We shall have to talk in their language, what are their problems, what are their difficulties, how we can be of some service to them. And we shall have to give them some tangible service to them. They should feel that after coming here we have been benefited. And so in that thing we shall have to come down and think in that life. And this has become some prime necessity for our organization. We shall have to do because it is some sacred trust and response is entrusted on us. It is a very good question and I think others also will share with you and you will come forward with some concrete proposal and how you can contribute also. Should we? Any more questions? Should we? Uh, Thank you. On behalf of uh. may I uh, request mm. any future program, particularly that you have come here in Chicago to develop a wonderful project to the Gale in, in Calcutta, about that if you can say a few words. Calcutta? Uh, oh, yes. That's a uh, I forgot somebody put into my <laughs> ears that you talk about Vivekti, so I forgot it. So he has reminded me. Ah, Vivekti, we, it has got a little bit history. Our chief minister, West Bengal chief minister, once we invited him to give on Swamiji's uh, Chief Minister, we invited her uh, for some functions and celebration. There, by the way, she gave an expression, Swamiji, you are doing so many uh, areas, serving the society in so many areas, but can you do something how to make man, proper man? That was the dream of Swami Vivekananda. Can you help in that line? It was some casual statement. We did not take it so seriously. But she did not forget. Once she suggested that here is a big chunk of land, very prestigious area in Calcutta, Salt Lake, and yes, just in front of the Eco Park. So, and that land's cost will be today one crore, uh, 100 and 20 crores uh, rupees. That chunk of land she allotted for Ramakrishna mission. Not only that, she wanted to give 10 crores of rupees also. 5 crores she has, uh, 5 and 7, 7 crores already she has given to us. Our idea was we wanted to start there a project. That project will be it is the Chicago model. Chicago model means this main building will be the replica of this art institute. Replica of the art institute. And the adjoining other buildings will be there. Those buildings will be dedicated to the foreign devotees or admirers who sacrifice for the cause of Swamiji. One will be the name of Goodwin. And one in the name of Nivedita, another will be in the name of Wright, another in the Hale, MacLeod, in that way, Xavier. In that way, we would do. There, the project is, it will be some sort of training facilities to form these sweepers, the hawkers, down uh, to all sections of society, up to the University Vice Chancellors, IIT Directors, IS Officers, all sorts of judges, all sorts of systems of society, they will get 
this training. It will be, a, what you can say, it is a value education. That means decision making. And the prophets, part of the moment, now the, the technology has advanced so much that there is no time to think. On the spot of the moment, we shall have to give judgment, we have to give the decision. Whether I shall do it or not. And you will have to say yes or no. So at that moment, if we just fail to give the correct judgment, the families will break, catastrophe will happen in the society. So how to give the correct judgment, correct moment, we try to, we are thinking of making an institute for that time. So we feel that if it comes up, Ramakrishna Mission will be able to uh, some another dimension for a human culture and civilization. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Friends, on behalf of all of you, I offer my pranam, our pranam to the very senior Swamiji. He is sitting over here almost one and a half an hour, more than that. And this is an encouragement of all of us. Wonderful programs are coming up. This is the first time I read the papers will come to us and then I will send it to all of you. Citizenship training. In our country, this will be the first time so many varieties of training we give, but this will be the first time to give citizenship training. All through we are subject, praja. Let every government should do, king should do, administrator should do. I am not concerned, no. You are concerned. So that citizenship training, uh, that is also their thinking of all other so it's a unique thing is going on, but a lot of expectation is on Chicago Center. The Swami has come and at this age, he got down at about 11 o'clock. The moment he came out, he said, don't bother about my food or rest. I like to go and see again that place where Swami Vivekananda delivered the lecture. We went over there. And then from there, I was feeling so hungry, but he was inspiring me from here to there, there to there, all these places. Once again, he went and sat on those uh, stairs that Swami Vivekananda sat in the Hyde Park. And then at about 5, 5.30 only, we came back. Almost forcefully, I asked him to uh, lie down for 30 minutes the tremendous inspiration and expecting that the Chicago Center should also do a lot many things. Our power is there. Sri Ramakrishna Ma, Swami Vivekananda and after that you people. So you have to think, you have to come forward and you have to inspire your friends and uh, relatives also in a small way, if we can do. Ma Sharadamani Devi, she lived in that house. Just in front of her house, there is a, almost a dungeon. The people, they are living in a subhuman life. Can't we do something for them? Like that, so many other places are there. So we are devotees, we are living over here. Can't we do something? We have to think in this way. Again, here, again and again, the Swami is doing, reaching out. So we have to go to the schools. We have to go to other people also. Tell them, uh, telling them that this is the thing is going to happen. So I thank you very much. Today is a working day. Still so many of you have come. Again and again, I thank you to Dhakur Mahaswamiji. All your wishes be fulfilled. Good wishes, of course. Thank you. There will be prashad after offering pranam. Then he will go down and we will have our prashad together. Thank you. Good night.